Hello, my name is Austin Torres and welcome to Would You Die, the show where we examine all the monsters and villains of pop culture. Today we're looking at the scariest thing to come out of Texas since the Zodiac Killer. That's right, it's Leatherface of the Texas Chainsaw franchise. What a spooky boy. Let's find out if you stand a chance. Leatherface, also known as Bubba, also known as Junior, also known as Leather, also known as Thomas, also known as Zebediah, also known as the Mother of Dragons, wait, first appeared in one of the most important films in the history of horror, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Released in 1974 and directed by Toby Hooper, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre laid the foundations for horror movies to come, inspiring slashers like Halloween and Friday the 13th, and filmmakers like Wes Craven and Rob Zombie. Most importantly, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre gave us a beloved subject of this video and successfully spawned a franchise. Not bad for a film made on a budget of $140,000. The Texas Chainsaw franchise is just as messed up as the Halloween franchise, and I'm not talking about the gore. Although there's plenty of that too. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was released in 1986, 12 years after the original. This sequel focuses on the dark comedy and the gore, and while not well received at first, it has since developed a cult following. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, came out in 1990, ignores its predecessor, and I don't really have much else to say about it. It has Ken Foray, Aragorn, a golden chainsaw. That's pretty cool. He doesn't use it, if I remember correctly. The next installment, 1997's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, ignores the previous two movies and stars Academy Award winners Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. Uh, Hey, you gotta start somewhere. 2003's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre would help kick off the 2000's horror remake boom, along with 2002's The Ring and 2004's Dawn of the Dead. This movie features a meaner Leatherface, Jessica Biel, and Arlie Ermey, as well as buckets of gory goodness and one of the sickest shots I've ever seen in a horror movie. Look. This remake would get a 2006 prequel before getting rebooted yet again in 2013 with Texas Chainsaw 3D. Leatherface's latest big screen outing, titled Leatherface, came out in 2017 and served as a prequel to both the 1974 original film and the 2013 3D film. Cause you know, that makes sense. As of filming this episode, a ninth Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie is on the way probably convoluting the series timeline even further. Anyways, Texas Chainsaw Massacre has a bunch of comic books and toys. Toys! Leatherface even makes a few appearances in video games, including a guest appearance in Mortal Kombat X with Alien and Jason Voorhees. Well, I think I hyped him up enough. Let's talk some Leatherface. A member of the dysfunctional cannibal Sawyer family, or the Hewitts, or some other stupid name depending on the sequel, Leatherface's role has changed from film to film, as does his name, personality, motivations, actors. They took a lot of liberties with Leatherface throughout the years. Some constants throughout the series is that Leatherface wears his victim's faces as a mask, and he kills people with the chainsaw. He's just doing his best. I'm not gonna go into more detail because it changes with every movie. Sometimes he's a bully butcher, sometimes he's a mental patient. Leatherface chainsaws people, and he wears their faces. It's what he do. A chainsaw. Duh. Meat tenderizer. Makes sense, right? A pragmatic weapon for our cannibal buddy. Fun fact, in the 1974 original, Leatherface kills more people with a meat tenderizer than he does a chainsaw. Should be called the Texas Meat Tenderizer Massacre. No, I see why they went with Chainsaw. Meat Hook. Continuing with the cannibal theme, Leatherface is a butcher of the human variety. Blow him up. Leatherface is really just a dude. I mean, blowing him up's kind of overkill, but it works. That's actually the only way Leatherface dies in the movies. He survives seven of the eight films he's in. Probably will survive the ninth one too. However, you can disarm him, literally. 
You can also distract him to get away, but like, good luck. I personally wouldn't try to kill him because of his track record, but escape is possible. Jump out of a window. The only proven way to escape Leatherface. According to my count, Leatherface has killed 34 people. Across eight movies, that averages out to 4.25 kills a film. Seems like a low count, but give Leatherface a break. Look what your brother did to that star! He tries his best. Anyways, let's look at the original 1974 classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Leatherface encounters six people that aren't his family and kills four of them. That's a kill rate of 6.66%. Ooh, I don't like that. I'm around that up, because I'm a good Christian boy. Giving Leatherface a lethality rating of 7 out of 10 skulls. So if you encounter the Pride of the Sawyers, would you die? Based on these results, you have a 100% chance of dying when encountering Leatherface. Duh, he's gonna chainsaw you and wear your face. It's what Leatherfaces do. Thank you for watching this episode of Would You Die? Do you have a suggestion on who or what I should cover next? Comment your thoughts and check out my previous episodes and other fun shows here at Three Wise Men Media. Don't forget to subscribe. Tune in next time when we discuss some other spooky icon. Until then, I'm Austin Torres. Try not to die. Me